Right, that's that decided then. Next year, the Christmas tree will go up in August. Does anyone have any other business? Yes, me. We need to get to the bottom of why all the sweets are going missing at board meetings. Oh, I think I'll hand that over to the trustees to look into. Anything else? We almost forgot about the refugees. Yay, the refugees. I'm in a special dance for this part. Your dancing is as good as his fundraising skills. Thanks. Do we get to hear from Chris this week? Oh, yes. Thanks for the reminder. Here it is. Okay. Well, good morning, Chris. Good morning, Philip. It's, uh, it's good to, to catch up with you again. Have you been working in the camp this week? We have indeed. We have indeed. It's been busy. Busy. And, and how many people have been coming through? Well, at the moment, um, it's less than it was when the weather was warmer, but still between two and 4,000 a day. All right. Okay. Boy, those, those numbers really are overwhelming when, when you consider the number of people that need help. Um, yes. and, and you say the weather's a little bit colder. What, what are you talking about? Um, some days have been about hovering at about zero during the day and below zero at night. Okay. All right. So it's cold. Especially right. for people who come from hot countries, like the most of the refugees. Okay, good. Well, would you like to share something with us um, about an incident maybe that you've come across in the camp? Absolutely. Well, there's this one thing that I was thinking about, about this time when we were doing a clothing distribution. We were in this tent and we had lots of clothing that we were giving out. And there was a big queue of refugees coming and we were trying the best we could to meet their needs. And there was a young boy um, who helped us. He came across, he was probably about 12, maybe 13. He was a Syrian boy, but he spoke perfect English. And he said, I can translate for you if you want help. And we said, okay, come on in. Absolutely. A translator is always welcome. And he came in and he was translating and asking people their needs. And he was a really, really nice boy and very, 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 very sharp. And he was just um, getting help and get people their clothing. And, but then we ran out of coats because it was cold. So completely ran out of coats and we started giving out jumpers. The best we could do at this point was jumpers, at least something to get people a little warmer. And then we pretty much ran out of jumpers as well, especially um, most sizes. We had some smaller ones, some, a few left, but they even they were not good ones anymore, just kind of rags. And so we were running out of everything to, to give, to keep people warm. And this one man came up and he had nothing but a t-shirt on and he was absolutely freezing. And um, we said, we're really sorry, but we don't have anything left that fits you. And this young lad, about 12 or 13, he had a beautiful jumper on him and a really nice jumper, you know, one that he was really, really proud of. And he was really proud of his clothes and he looked sharp. And, and he said, he said, he said to me, he said, is there anything, he said, this one's a little bit big, so I think it would fit this guy, but is there anything back there that would fit me? Anything at all. And um, so we went back and somebody found something. It was pretty much just a rag, you know, it wasn't very nice at all. But he took his beautiful jumper off and he gave it to this fellow refugee and he put on that rag. And that just really, really touched my heart. And um, that's one thing that has really touched my heart a lot is seeing not only the volunteers helping the refugees, but many times the refugees helping each other. Yeah. At one point when we were running low on clothes, we also had refugees coming and making donations. If somebody had an extra pair of shoes or an extra jumper or an extra coat, they were bringing them to us so that we could give out to those that needed them more. And um, those kind of things just really, really touched me. So what would you say to a congregation who is trying to raise money for clothing for some of these refugees, especially as we're coming into winter? I guess I'd say thank you, um, particularly on behalf of the refugees. Um, just a few days ago, um, my wife put up, Karen put up a, a picture of a, one of our teens on Facebook and one of the refugees who had found us on Facebook, um, he went on there and he just, he left a message just saying, thank you so much for taking care of us during this rough time. And, and it, it, there's so many grateful people. I mean, so much gratitude. And, and I know that many of them would echo that sentiment and just say, thank you so much for caring. Okay, Chris, thank you very much. We'll You're look welcome. forward to hearing from you next week. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Whoa, 4,000 refugees? That's even more than the amount of the lights we have on the church Christmas tree this year. And that's a lot. I stared at the tree for so long last week, my eyes went all funny. That's why it's so important that we keep doing all that we can to help them. What is happening to your voice in the video? Why? What's wrong with it? It's different. Really? I didn't notice. Anyway, can everyone remember how we can help the refugees this year? For telling our clothes to raise money. No, silly. We are raising money to buy clothes. That's what I said. Keep encouraging the people in the church to give to the specially designed buckets. And one more thing. Don't forget to... Pray! Pray!